This is a Princess S78 and this is one of my favourite boats and I'm going to take you on board and show you exactly why. But it starts right on the outside because this is a really cool looking boat. What they've done with this is they've taken a sports cruiser style, so really sleek and elegant. But they've also put a small flybridge on it and that makes it really multi-purpose. So we're going to head on board, I'm going to give you the full tour. I think what we're going to do is head straight on inside. There's a load of stuff on the deck to show you as well. There's a tender garage, for example, high-low platform, of course. Access down to the crew cabin, we'll look at that, and the engine space, and there's a passerelle that extends out of here. But we'll go straight through, first of all, and take a look at the interior, and then work our way back out and show you the entire boat. So let's step straight on in to here. Now, straight away, you've got this wonderful main deck saloon. It's all on one level. You can see right from those steps, straight through the entire deck is all nice and level all the way through. In fact, the only step is there's a small step down to the galley and the reason they've done that is to give you room for a full height fridge freezer and then there's steps up, of course, to the, uh, to the helm position. So we'll start here at the galley. It's a galley aft layout, as you can see. These glass panels here can retract back if you want to open this out a little bit more. Um, as I mentioned, there's a small step down and then you've got things like just a massive load of storage everywhere, as you'd expect. Love the way they've done stuff like this. Everything's all nicely kept in place. This is all really lovely quality stuff. Cutlery is in there. And these are all soft clothes, of course. It's all electric cooking, as you would expect. There is a dishwasher tucked away in there. And then this is this full height fridge freezer. So you've got the fridge here, and then these are freezer drawers down here. A bit more storage around here. I won't open them all, but just to give you the idea, that's all tucked away like that. And then what you've also got here is a dinette area, so a great place to sit and chat and dine. And it's all links seamlessly straight through to the cockpit. If we head on forward a little bit further, I'll just mention these have got blinds all the way around, and these are all electric blinds. So there's a little button down here. If we hit that one, <laughs> point the camera the right way, you'll see those coming down. We've got them on this side as well, as you can see. If we head on through a little bit further, over here we've got things like the wine cooler is in here. This is for um, bottles, and you see how it illuminates. That's really nice. Um, the AV equipment is in there as well. This is quite cunning. So this one opens like this. There's drawers in here, and you'd think, well, they'll never open because they won't get past here. Watch this. <laughs> they open on a slant. Ah, oh, they think of everything. I like the way they've put this a bit of an angle, rather than keeping everything dead straight. It just makes this feel really comfortable and cosy. Huge windows, great view out. We are in Swanwick at the moment in the UK, which is the home of Princess Motor Yacht Sales, who had this one for sale. We'll head on forward again a little bit further. It's a big TV that rises out of here. I like this little snug tucked away up the top. And again, we're starting to see some of the sports cruiser influences. As I mentioned, it is a sports cruiser style, not a flybridge. So you've got this massive sliding roof. This whole section here opens up. It means you can sit down here and the boat's underway, have the fresh air through there, have the open experience, but actually be really sheltered. And it is a high performance boat, so that is a useful thing. If we head up here, there's a side access door, so you can get straight out onto the side decks. All these areas, of course, are heated and air conditioned. That's what these little controllers that you'll see dotted around the place are for. And then as we look around here, you've got, of course, the throttle controls. This is um, for your multifunction displays, so radar, charts, all that kind of thing. Engine instrumentation is in the center. There's an autopilot under here. This one's got a sea keeper on it, so that's tucked away underneath that one. And it also has bow and stern thrusters. And you've got switch gear for lighting and wipers and pumps and all that kind of stuff all across here. That one's VHF radio. If we come across a little bit further, that opens up just for a little bit of extra storage. It's all so beautifully formed. It's really nicely done. And of course, this is all in low glare so that you don't get reflections on the windscreen. Now, there's two ways down to the lower deck because you'll see there's a stairway here and a stairway here. And that will become evident as to how those work in just a moment, because we'll head down this one first of all. This is the main distribution panel, so you've got your uh, battery switches here for engine start and domestic, all your switches for lighting, accent lights, pumps, all that kind of stuff. So all the 24 volt stuff is here. All the 230 volt stuff is on this side. You've got twin generators on this one, or it runs off of the, um, off the shore power, of course, and then you've got water systems in the center and high load isolations for windless, passerelle, all that kind of stuff. That's all controlled from there.
Now, if we head on down a little bit further, I think we'll go right up to the bow first of all. I love the way they've done this with the walnut in, uh, in satin finish, but then a lot of these panels like this just lightens it all up rather than these to be all wood down here, but this looks a lot nicer. Handrail along here, and then this is the VIP guest cabin. Really good size. You've got the hull windows in here as well. These little sections here are opening sections, so you can get ventilation in here. Of course, they are air conditioned as well. You've got AV equipment in here. You've got storage all up around the top. That one there is an access hatch, so that there is another way out of this level if it's ever needed in an emergency. You can get up and through out that way. You can see there's speakers up in the ceiling. That's for the AV equipment. And then there are big drawers down underneath the bed like this. And then you've got wardrobe over on this side. Really good size. Air conditioning vent up above it. Just feel a bit of cool air coming through there, which is nice. And then a little dressing area down here. And of course it's ensuite. All the cabins are ensuite on this boat. So if we have a look in here, that's what that fella is. So um, obviously heated tower rail, you've got the mirror here and that one has a bit of storage in behind it. Toilet of course, is a separate shower area. And then you've got the sink over on this side and a bit more storage down underneath. So that's the ensuite for that cabin, but that is a really nice size cabin, isn't it? That's superb. Let's head on round. Again, you can see the air conditioning controls dotted around the place. And if we head on back down the boat then, if we have a look on this side, this is cabin three. So the one we were just in was cabin two. Two singles, but what's neat about this is there's a button up here and if we push it, see how that bed moves across. I won't take it all away because I'll knock the things off of the nightstand there, but that moves across so that, there we go, you can of course bring this over and make that into a double bed if you want to. Again you've got the nice feature panelling and the lighting, again you've got the opening sections. All these windows have blinds across them, that storage along the top there. There's again TV in here and as you'd expect, you know, big hanging lockers, all that kind of stuff. And these are access panels. So these take you into, get that off carefully, engineering areas. So plumbing, air conditioning, ducting, all that kind of stuff. You can see there's another panel down there. It means you can get behind the scenes if you need to. En suite again, of course. So that's in here again, nice size. And again, all the usual facilities. So you've got your mirror, you've got storage in about the place, and then you've got the big shower over on this side and a little wave in the mirror. Let's head across because cabin four is actually back here. Again, two singles. That's a really good size. In fact, it goes far as I say that's probably cabin three. This feels bigger than the one I was just in, which is quite surprising. So two singles in there. Again, you've got this nice little dressing area and the AV equipment as um, hanging locker on this one is tucked away. Over here. And the ensuite for this cabin is there again with a separate shower and the storage and so forth. But what's interesting about this one is the fact that it is also a day heads. So there's a door for that just here. If you notice some of the doors we came through, that's what that one's for. So during the day, people can pop down and go into there without having to go through any of the cabins. So those are your three guest cabins. The owner's cabin is actually down here with its own completely separate stairwell. So if we loop around this way, you've got these nice stairs that drop down like this. There's a lobby area at the bottom, and what you find here is laundry facilities. So washing machines, a washer dryer is tucked away down there. And then there's a load of storage for towels or bedding or whatever else you want to keep in here. So that is a very, very useful area. And that one there, just a little bit more storage. And if you go through this door, this is the owner's cabin. It's the full beam of the boat, as you'd expect. And being a nearly 80 foot boat, 
<laughs> it's quite dramatic, isn't it? Again, you see this beautiful woodwork they've done where they form it around in places like that. That looks really good. Won't open them all, of course, but just to give you an idea, you've got drawers about the place. You've got your little dressing area here, so that lifts up like so. Again, the opening sections in the hull windows. And again, there are blinds that come down across these. So if you want privacy, you've got it. But that looks fantastic. I love, again, the feature panel they put across here. It looks very smart, very tasteful indeed. Big TV in here. So you've got all the AV equipment, of course. More storage over here. And a nice little area to tuck yourself away, should you wish. And if we head back, this is like a little dressing area because what they've done is they've put the wardrobes back here in this corner. So they're in here like this, really good size. You can see there's more storage down the side of there. And then there's another one tucked away just here. And the safe, as you can see, is in there as well. There's more drawers down underneath. These are all the instruction books. So every bit of kit on the boat, from the AV equipment to the navigation kit to fridges, whatever, anything that comes with an instruction book, that's where you will find it. And then the ensuite for this one, of course, it's the biggest in the boat. It goes right across here. You've got the twin sinks in here. Again, a ton of storage about the place. But then you've got a toilet in here. I love these illuminated mirrors. They look really good. And then finally, the shower is down the end. Rainfall shower, really good size. I'm very nicely finished. I love the way they've done this. I'm not sure if it's marble, but it certainly looks like it. It's very smart. Brilliant. So that is pretty much the interior. That is a lovely cabin, isn't it? Let's press on. There's a lot more to show you. We're going to do the whole of the deck areas, the flybridge, and of course, we have the crew cabin and we have the engine space. All well worth seeing. But that is pretty magnificent, isn't it? That looks really good. Okay, we'll head on back. What I think we'll do is we'll go right to the stern and I can explain about the tender capabilities and then we'll walk our way forward. Did I say work or walk? A bit of both, walk our way forward. Right, so we have high load platform. I think it'll take a Williams 395, if I remember rightly, or of course you could put a jet ski here because this all opens up. So the bathing platform lowers down. This then raises like a huge clamshell. And then there's a tender in there which will roll out. It's on rollers and there's a winch. And that, if I remember rightly, is a Williams 345. So you can get a pretty decent tender in there. But also another tender if you wanted one on the bathing platform, as I say, if you prefer to have a toy like a jet ski, you can do that as well. That one gives us access down to the crew cabin in the engine room. We'll do that last. But let's have a wander around the decks first. I think I mentioned it before, but there's a passerelle that extends out of here. That's for stern to berthing in the med. It means you can walk straight off the boat along the passerelle and onto the quay. So that works very well. One thing you do notice is the quality of things like the stainless steel. Look how this is not tubular. It's kind of squashed flat into a sort of like an oval section and it feels really good as you come up and hold onto that. It's the first thing you touch as you come onto the boat. So that's great. This is a door that comes across. There's um, storage for a life raft underneath there. So all the practical elements obviously are taken care of as well. Big sun pads on the back. Again, very much a sports cruiser thing. And then if we come a bit further forward, this is rather interesting because all of these, you can see there's little sockets here. And that's because these are actually bolted down, but you can move them around. And that means you can configure this layout however you want. So you could bring this over to be much more around the table if you wanted to. You can move this back to give you access through the front area rather than the back area. Shift it all around however you please. This is a high-low table, so that can be dropped down. The other thing you can do with this, of course, is you can fold it. So it's open for dining at the moment, but if you lift that up, and drop it across, it will then rotate thusly. And now you've got a much smaller area, so if you just want to put your drinks or whatever on there, then you can do. What else have we got? That's a hatch down to the engine room. It's not the usual route, and we'll see that when we're in the engine room in a little while. Switch gear here is for things like there is a sun awning. You can see it's extended at the moment all the way out, but that retracts back into there. All of the cockpit lighting is controlled from here as well. The cockpit table, all that kind of stuff is all switched from there. Another thing that we find here, actually, if we look in here, 
It's just like a safety locker. So again, it's taking care of the practical elements. So this is giving us, you now it's got all electric bilge pumps, of course, right the way through, but these are manual backups. So you've got a manual pump here and you can use these to control where you discharge it from. You've also got um, fuel shutoff valves. So if you ever had a problem with an engine or a generator and you wanted to shut off the fuel to it, you can do it remotely from here. And these are fire extinguishers. People often say about the fire extinguishers in the engine room where you couldn't get in there there's a fire. Well, firstly, they're automatic, but secondly, even if they didn't go off, you can fire them remotely. So that's what those are for. Let's drop that back down. There's a big lift window here so that when the door is slid open as it is at the minute, this connects right the way through. I like the way they finished this. It's sort of upholstery finish on here. That's very good. And also the fact they've done the dark grey in areas like this just finishes it off really nicely. I think we will take a walk around this side. I'll show you down here because this is the switch gear for things like the high low platform, the passerelle, the garage, all that kind of stuff is all controlled from there. And then you've got winches on the back here. So again, when you're stern to berth, you pick up a line at the bow and then you put a line around there and you can winch it back into the key, get everything nice and tight. Button for that is down there because it's electric. If you wander up along this way, this one is uh, engine controls and bow and stern thruster controls. And in fact, there's an anchor winch control there as well. And again, stern to berthing, you can stand here and you can watch the boat in. So that's really helpful. Again, that beautiful metallic finish they put in places like this, that looks so good. Engine room vents down here, and then these these massive windows that we could see from the inside. Again, you've got this oval section to these, so they're like a sort of flat top, feels very super yachtish rather than the sort of more traditional just round section you have there. This is more expensive to do, but on the boat of this calibre, of course, well, it makes sense. So wander up around here, these are pin lights dotted around all the way around the deck, so it's all lit up. Again, the practical touches you've got big storage lockers in here. This is for fenders and warps and all that kind of stuff. And that one there, <laughs> what does that mean? I think that is a discharge for a holding tank, but I can't be certain. <laughs> don't, don't quote me. Um, what else can I show you on here? Let's clip that the right way around. We can close it. There we go. These are so that you can put a bimini up here. So there are poles that come up and a big bimini top. If you want shade up here, really hot down in the meadow, wherever, you can have it. If you come right on through again, there's seating in around here. As you can see, there's a sunbathing area. Again, this beautiful detailing that they do with this lovely stainless steel for these cup holders and this teak that matches the floor and so forth. Again, that's another socket for those uh, bimini poles. If we come right up to the bow then you've got the anchor windlass here, the big cleats and the fair leads that take the lines down through the bulwarks. And underneath this one, can I get that up easily? Yes I can from there. That's deliberately not fixed down, it is at the front so it doesn't blow away, but that is the hatch that we saw in the forward cabin. So that is that route out if ever it were needed. Probably wouldn't be, almost certainly wouldn't be, but nonetheless, there it is. And it's reassuring to know that it's there. This is how the boat looks from here. You can see that big sunroof up over the helm. That's what I mean about it being a sports cruiser. So you look at these sports cruisers here. That's your typical sports cruiser. That's your typical flybridge. What this is, is a meld of the two. So you've got the opening roof like the sports cruiser and the upper deck like the flybridge. That's exactly what this boat does. Everything. Okay, let's wander back down this side. There's another one of these uh, big deck lockers here. There's speakers up here as well. So there is um, ability to have music up here. And then if we head on back a bit further, these massive windscreens and these big pantograph wipers. That's that side door that we saw at the helm. So that's how you can get in and out from the helm station. This is, I mean, it's about as big as you want to go, really, but this is an owner-managed boat if you wanted to be. I suspect most people would have a skipper, uh, maybe even shut on a temporary basis when they're doing longer cruises. But, you know, you could owner run this if you wanted to. So we're back into the cockpit area and then this time we're going to take these stairs here which will take us up to the flybridge. Now there is I believe a V78 that doesn't have the flybridge so if you just want a really sleek look you don't have to have this but I think this makes an awful lot of sense because it gives you a free space. If you don't have the flybridge this is just a flat deck. It does make the boat look great but this is so low key. They've kept the sides low. It's just the fabric top rather than the solid top so it is very low profile so you don't lose those sports cruiser looks. And the thing is that quite often when you get these sports cruisers 
with a flybridge. The flybridge is really small because this is nearly 80 foot long. There's a massive space up here. It really is a proper full-sized flybridge. This table, in case you're wondering how that doesn't fly around, it's actually fitted into little deck sockets. You can see them down here. So that keeps that in place. If we go right back then, we've got the radar arch. There's the very swanky looking Raytheon radar there. TV antenna is there. That's a searchlight up on the top, nav light above that. So that all lives up there like so. Should be a GPS antenna there somewhere. Maybe that's what that little fella there is. And if we spin on round, so it's the fabric bimini on these, which is what you normally get because it is a sports cruiser style. There's a wet bar over here. And what this is giving us is a top loading fridge. And underneath here is the barbecue and the sink. So that tap just lifts. I do it right. There we go. Into place like that. Let's drop that one down again. Again, all nicely finished. There's a beautiful bit of teak around the edge of it and so forth. And then underneath there, there is an ice maker. And that little chap there is a cover for the sink. They put a little slot so you can tuck it away. So that goes on there, if you wanted to. You can see the mechanism for the bimini here. I'm pretty sure that's a powered one, so you can actually power that away. And I think it drops into a recess around the front. I'm not completely certain on that, but it looks like it should do which is nice because you can get that tucked completely away. Now again, we talk about it being potentially owner-operated. This is fantastic for this because you've got lovely hand position here, great view, but also everybody can sit and join you. you imagine you get half a dozen people in here, easy, maybe more, you know, two or three on each side and two in the centre. That's really good. And then up here, you've got things like your autopilot, your engine controls, of course, your thruster controls. And you might be thinking, well, that's great, but there's no engine instrumentation. Well, there is. This is very James Bond, Roger Moore era. Where are we? Down, 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 down. There we go. So we've got the twin multifunction displays. So again, you can display whatever you like, radar, engine instrumentation, charts, whatever. And then your actual engine instrumentation then is over on this side. And thusly. Is that two thuslies in one video? I think it might be. But what a view. Look at that, you stand up here. And that is fantastic, isn't it? Just amazing. I mentioned we're at Swanwick. They've got a new sales pavilion. This is going to be all the sales areas along here. Um, so that's where Princess are going to be, along with various other um, manufacturers, which is really nice. I think it's a great idea. And you can see some of the other Princess boats along here. Again, this is a really good demonstration of the difference between a sports cruiser and a flybridge because this boat next to us is a sports cruiser. So sleek styling, sliding roof. And that's a flybridge, so a little bit less sleek looking, but you've got the upper deck. And that's what I mean. This boat gives you that style and performance, because these tend to be faster, with that uh, ability to have that upper deck. That's really good. OK, last thing to show you then, last but not least, is the crew cabin and the engine space. So we'll head back down here. Wander around the back. We'll wave to Joe. Hello, Joe. You're famous now. <laughs> and then if we go down here, Joe's one of my best friends at Princess. She looks after me well, does Joe. This one takes us into the crew area. Now, it's worth noting that, of course, because you've got the, um, the garage on that side, the crew area is a bit smaller than it would be on a flybridge 78-footer. These are the compromises that you choose between. So if you were looking for a two crew permanently, you might consider going for a flybridge instead and get more space. If you just want one skipper or maybe occasionally two crew, well, then this will give you the ability for that because although it's a bit full of stuff at the moment, there are two um, beds here. And then over on this side, you've got the toilet, which I would have switched the light on if I'd checked earlier. There we go. So toilet, and there is a separate shower in here like so and in fact that's a bit of storage over on that side there's also things like there's a tv in here if we look up here that one is a a fridge there's a microwave in here as well so actually for a sports cruiser it's really pretty well catered for in the crew area and then that one is just hanging locker storage and so forth there's a bit more storage as well just back in that one there so that's the crew area, and then the last thing to talk about is the motors. Check this out. This is always spectacular on a big princess, and 
this boat is not letting us down in that department. So what have we got here? We've got a pair of twin MAN V12 engines. They're 1,900 horsepower each. And they're giving the boat about 37 knots. And this is what I mean about that sports cruiser performance. You won't get a flybridge, or you probably wouldn't get a flybridge boat that's going to give you that level of performance at this size. That's really tramping on for a near 80 foot boat. That's very fast indeed. There's also some pretty decent range because if you drop the speed up to 21 knots, so cruising speed, you're going to get over 400 miles. And that's with some reserve as well. That's not too empty. Or you can drop back to displacement speeds. That's about 10 knots and you're getting close to 1,000 miles. So it's got some legs if you want them, it's also got the speed if you want it. That's fantastic. That is that ladder that takes us up. I mentioned the hatch up in the cockpit, so that's another route into the engine space. That's where it is. It's really just an emergency exit. You wouldn't tend to use that normally. Well, it does mean you can get into here without going to the bathing platform, of course, so maybe that's useful if you're out at sea. Um, that is the tender garage. That's why that sort of intrudes into there. But we can go back down underneath it. And we will find under it, there's a big engineering space back here. The two generators live in here, and you can also access things like the stowing gear and all that kind of stuff. Very nicely packaged. There we go. Let's close that. And then again, all the typical princess, high quality plumbing and wiring. It's all so neat and lovely. Let's come right on around. That's that automatic fire extinguisher. I was talking about that. So that will set itself off automatically. But that pool that we saw up in the cockpit, that's linked there so you can set it off manually if you ever had to. The uh, side power system is here. So that's for the bow and the stern thruster. Those are hydraulic, as is the windlass. And you can see that there are overrides here. So if you ever needed to control those manually, then you can do You've got the master vault stuff here, so battery charging, um, the uh, inverter, all that kind of stuff is up here. And again, look how everything's labelled. So you can see exactly what everything is and what it does. Battery charger one, battery charger two. Even the plumbing. You look down over here and you can see exactly what everything is. And that is very much a princess thing. Battery boxes, again, you don't just have batteries bolted down. They're all in proper ventilated boxes. This is what you pay for when you buy a high-level boat like this. This is the level of engineering and quality that goes on behind the scenes. And that's why these boats are popular. This is all the air conditioning uh, equipment. I mentioned it's got different units for different cabins. You can see they're all racked out down in here. We've got big vents in here. We've got the control panels for the engines, all that kind of stuff. Massive exhaust systems, as you can see and full height and you've got these bars around the engine again you know it's the sort of stuff if they didn't put the bars around the engine people would probably still buy the boat but that's the kind of thing although it's expensive they still do it so that makes this a nice safe working environment and again that's back to the quality of these i mean the construction the thickness of these is all really really good that one up there i think i'm right in saying <laughs> judging by the fact it says sea water reverse osmosis is a water maker so that is creating fresh water from seawater so that, again, allows you to keep your water tanks topped up. You're not running out and thinking, right, I've got to go back to shore now and fill those back up again. And then finally, that's the sea keeper living down underneath there. Let's reverse right up. And you can see it in all its glory. Look at that, fuel tanks outboard. Magnificent. Very nice indeed. That's it. Let's go and have a wander around the outside. I'm going to take you for a walk down the outside of the boat, actually. We don't normally do that, but it is against the pontoon where we can. And it's good to see the size of this from standing alongside it, because it does give you an interesting perspective. So back out of here, again, look at the quality of the stainless and the way that all this is done. This is what you pay for. The engineering and the strength and the quality. So my shoes have migrated their way over here. How they've done these warps, isn't that lovely? And there she is. So let's have a walk down the outside. That is a one a magnificent yacht, isn't it? Absolutely superb. So I am going to finish off up here at the bell. I am going to say massive thanks to Princess Motor Yacht Sales, their dealers for these, and they've organized this tour. And as ever, Huge thanks to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of that one. Do me a favour, if you've not subscribed, hit that button. We're doing really, really well for subscribers at the minute. We're over 400,000, so 
come and join us. It'd be great to have you on board. And we'll look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.